It's a rainy day here in Troy, New York, but we're about to head up into the studio of Melissa Thorne, whose abstract paintings contain patterns with a story to tell. Follow me. see around you there's a lot of pattern in my studio and part of my interest in pattern has to do with this idea of taking the sort of disparate and confusing elements of the world and making some kind of order out of them. In most cases I'm also thinking about how can I take something in the world that I see and look at and recognize maybe something that's familiar how can I simplify or abstract that in a way so that it might become unfamiliar or might open up a kind of possibility or a doorway inside of it for some other way of seeing or looking or thinking or feeling. I knew I wanted to be an artist from a very young age. My grandfather was a serious woodworker and let me work in his shop with him. Um, as early as the age of probably four or five, I started building things with him in his shop. And my maternal grandmother was a real crafter. She made ceramics, she was a needle worker. So I didn't necessarily know that, you know, being an artist was something that you could do as a career or um, as a kind of vocation, but I knew that I liked working with my hands and that I was drawn to activities where I got to sort of um, make some sort of expression of how I wanted to arrange the world. Probably when I was in undergrad, um, so probably around the time that I was in my you know, early 20s, I started gravitating toward um, patterns that came from things like wallpaper, textiles, and initially I was really interested in the history of these patterns. So I was looking at something like Victorian pattern, um, like a wallpaper pattern, and thinking about you know, where did these forms come from, what is the sort of design history behind them, what kind of cultural information might be embedded in these patterns. I became more and more interested in patterns that are handmade. So for instance, um, a pot holder or a crocheted afghan or doily, thinking about the decisions and intentions that go into a crafted object. And also thinking about this idea of, you know, what do we think of as art? What do we think of as craft or design? What are the sort of hierarchies involved there? I'll make a template and then just print it out and kind of play with kind of coloring them in. I go through a process of drawing um, and usually starting to take information out. So maybe simplifying something, um, maybe taking out a detail and repeating it to create a new pattern. Um, in some cases, taking something that might be a flat pattern and making it dimensional, like giving it volume and seeing like what does it look like if this becomes a form instead of just a surface. Um, so th that's how the drawings and paintings sort of start. and then. Past that, there's another part of my process that has come up over probably the last decade in which I'm also um, painting the walls of the space that the, pe the pieces appear in. So here in my studio, we're just looking at like individual pieces, but in a gallery situation or museum or institution, or in some cases, you know, abandoned cabins, I'll make a piece that is painted directly on the wall and then perhaps something will hang on top of it. I started this process where I collect color for a project from the surroundings that I'm in. Things from nature, um, different kinds of paint finishes from vernacular architecture, so it's like you're kind of collecting color to create a sense of place. Color is a really central component to the way that I work. It's um, probably the most, what's the right word? I, I, I think a lot of my work kind of works through systems and methods, but I give myself a lot of permission to perhaps be more evocative or sensory or um, kind of more intuitive with color. Painterly abstraction offers an opportunity for a viewer to have a new experience. 
We are so bombarded with images and with sensory information, and a lot of it is given to us in formats that are very familiar to us and that we read in a very linear way. And I think when that is interrupted, when we have a moment that proposes a new way of looking or a new way of feeling or seeing, um, that that is an opportunity for some kind of um, opening um, that I think is really exciting.